Okay, this diagram shows a coil spinning inside a magnetic field. This is how AC generators work, like the ones in power stations. As you can see, as the coil spins, the EM, uh, the flux linkage through it is changing. So this induces an EMF, um, and we can figure out the EMF induced by taking the gradient of this graph, because the rate of change of flux will give you the EMF actually negative of the rate of change of flux. So if I want to plot this, the gradient here is zero. So I'm going to plot all the points at zero gradient first, because that should induce zero EMF. Here we've got maximum negative gradient, so this will become positive, maximum positive, and this one will has a maximum positive gradient because the negative sign from Lenz's law, it will become maximum negative the gradient there is positive so it becomes positive as you can see if you sketch this out it's a sine curve the equation for this looks a bit like this uh, as you can see there's an extra omega on the outside compared to the flux linkage equation um, the maximum value that sine omega t can take is one so when that's one this Omega BAN represents the maximum EMF. Okay, I've got the same coil spinning inside a magnetic field again, and we've connected to an oscilloscope which measures the EMF on the y axis and the time on the x axis. Now, the question is what would happen if I decide to spin the coil at two times the frequency? So if we start spinning the coil at two times the frequency, the rate of change of flux is going to double. So the EMF induced should double as well. So we should expect a higher amplitude on the waveform, a bigger EMF. But at the same time, the time taken uh, for the oscillations should decrease as well. So the, the time period should half. So the waveform will look a bit like this. So as you can see, the amplitude has increased, or the EMF the induced has increased, and the time period has decrease as well because we're spinning at twice the rate.